Hello. Okay, I'm getting myself set up here in my thing. I hit the live button before I was quite ready. I mean, I'm ready, but I hadn't gotten this set up on the tripod. So if you're watching this on the replay, just want to let you know we're going to wait a little bit till people get here. Um, but make sure you have notifications turned on if you're thinking, man, I wish I could have been there live. Because when you click the bell, then that's how you find out when I'm actually live. Um, also, just so you know, I'm going to wait a little bit till people get here. So there's going to be a little bit delay here at the beginning. But other than that, we are pretty much ready to rock and roll and I'm just gonna wait and see when people show up. So let me, I'm gonna work on getting the tripod set up while y'all come in and when you get here, say hello and let me know that you are here while I fiddle with this a little bit. Okay, let's see. Tilt that that way. It always wants to go a little bit lower than what I want. Let me try to get up a little bit higher. We'll see. All right, that looks pretty good I think. Okay, and I'm wearing my YouTube shirt because we're being thematic. So, um, tonight we are making dinner and we are doing a bok choy sausage skillet type thing. And then also I'm doing some roasted potatoes. Rachel says, hey, watching while doing chem homework, lol. That's fun. Um, I'm glad I can be a fun distraction from your chem homework, but I also, also hope I'm not too much of a distraction from your chem homework. Actually, I just remembered I gotta get an onion. Let's see. Onions are down here. Oh, the one thing I forgot to get before we got started. Okay, so I'm gonna get my onion over here and then I've got everything else set out here. So we should be pretty good to get started. I don't think I've forgotten anything, but you'll know if something goes awry, then we just kind of roll with it on the live streams. Also, it is really hot in this kitchen. I'm already getting toasty. That's not a good sign. Okay, so I've got the oven preheating. Um, I've got some sheet pans out, different stuff going on. So what we are doing tonight is we're I've got some potatoes here. We're gonna roast these up in the oven. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, also got the bok choy here, and this is going to be going in the skillet with an onion and some sausage, and it's gonna be a quick, easy dinner. This is one of my go-to dinners when bok choy is in season. So in the spring and in the fall, I get it at the farmer's market. I love it, Jason loves it. So it's a meal that I make pretty often uh, during those times of the year. And it's one that comes together really simply and easily, which is also nice. Um, oh, I need my iPad. Jason? Yeah. Can you bring me my iPad? Sure. I like to have that down here. If you've been on a few of these, you know I like to have that down here too, um, so I can see your comments when we turn the camera down and y'all are looking at the food and I can't see my screen anymore. So he's gonna bring that in and then we're gonna get started on chopping things um, and just getting this dinner going. So let me know where you're watching from, how you're doing, what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. Um, Cause so far, unless I missed a comment, yeah, I've only heard from Rachel and usually y'all are a little bit more talkative on these things. So I don't know if you're being shy, but at least say hi. Um, so I can say hi back. And Pornji is screaming in the background <laughs> because that's what she does. Anna says hi. Hi Anna, how are you doing? Um, I'm glad you're here. And Jason's getting the iPad set up for me, he's so nice. And then we'll get that in here and then we can get started cooking because I don't want to miss your comments while I'm doing all of my chopping. <laughs> Do you feel hot in here? Yeah, that's thinking it. It says it's 76 degrees in here. Give me a little window on the window. Or is the heat still on or something? No, I thought. This isn't a good sign, guys. I'm already sweating. Can we open the window? Yeah, I'm worried it's going to be too noisy. Okay, I've got the iPad here now so I can see your comments. Let me get the chat up. And then we're going to start chopping things. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the potatoes. Carmen Ribe says, hello from Georgia. Georgia, I love your videos. Hi, Carmen. Glad you're here. Anna says that she's doing well. Glad that I can catch the live stream again. Got my Reese cup ready to enjoy during the viewing and I hope you're feeling better. Thanks, and I am feeling a lot better, which is awesome. Barbara Azvido says, hey Sarah, kisses from Brazil. Hi Barbara, happy to have you here. Okay, we're gonna get started on the food. So I'm gonna turn the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing. And y'all know that this is always a little bit of an ordeal, but we make it work. Oh, okay that good I think that's good you can see the cutting board you can see what I'm doing okay so 
I've got my potatoes here. The first thing we gotta do is chop these up. And feel free, I can see the comments over here on my tablet. So if you have anything, uh, questions about what I'm doing, questions about other things you just wanna ask about, then type those in. But first thing, these potatoes have been sitting for a little bit, so they've got some eyes on them. So I'm just gonna cut those off where I see them. That one looks pretty good. And then I am going to, let's cut this one in half. I'm cubing these up to roast them in the oven. This is one of my favorite ways to cook potatoes. So when you do roasting, you want your veggies to be about the same size. Really when you cook most things, you want things to be about the same size just so that they cook evenly. So I'm just doing little cubes like that. So that's good. We're just gonna work our way through these. Also, if you haven't seen on some of my streams, I like to show you kind of some knife tips. So if I can get this in the frame. So you can see I'm, whole, I'm pinching the blade here um, as opposed to like putting my finger on the top or holding like really down low on the knife. You want to have the handle in your hand and then you just pinch the top of the blade with your first finger and your thumb and that gives you a nice balance and control on the knife. So a little tip there. Um, but we are going to cut this other piece in half and get our cubes. And look, there we go. So I'm gonna work through these potatoes and then y'all just put in questions or statements or whatever in the comments and we will chit chat. Um, I am feeling much better than I was. For those of you who saw the video from Tuesday, if you missed it, I'll keep it up a little bit longer after the stream, but then that sucker is gonna come down and will be gone and you won't be able to watch it. So if you wanna watch it, uh, maybe you wanna head over there after this. But um, in that video, I was talking about how I had been a little under the weather which was no fun, uh, nothing super serious, but just kind of, you know, the sore throat, sinus congestion, kind of gross stuff that just makes you feel bleh. So I was dealing with that over the weekend, which actually worked out because my plan was to just watch a lot of Stranger Things anyways, but it did get in the way of some work I wanted to do, which was no fun. Um, but I'm doing much better now. I drank a lot of tea. Oh, that potato has like a gross thing going on on the end. I drank a lot of tea with lemon and honey and I just kind of ate a lot of bananas and crackers and whatever. Um, and now I am almost back to 100%. I would say by now I feel like maybe 95%. So that's good. This one I think I'm gonna do in three sections. It's a little bit wider. And this is how many pounds is this? I wanna say this was a three pound bag of potatoes. I can check later um, if any of y'all are curious. But that is what we've got going on. And I'm not seeing a ton going on in the chat today. This is weird, y'all. Usually y'all have all kinds of things you're throwing at me, all kinds of questions. Um, but you know, if you don't have anything big to ask, that's cool. I'll just keep talking about potatoes and my day and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing a little bit of catch up on things I need to get done, just different work things, and trying to get back on track after being sick. And that's been going pretty well. Um, and I taught a class last night with the Dr. Yum Project. Um, if you watched my last What I Eat in a Day, I talked a little bit about that. It was that same class, so it was a parenting for wellness class. That class is really fun. Me and one of the cooking instructors, Wendy, have been teaching that. And so it was a really awesome group of parents, super nice, um, and just like really engaged, which is great as a teacher to have, you know, the people who are in the class be interested in what's going on. And they always had great questions and, you know, just comments from the week prior of like, oh, we've been working on this for the past week with our families. And it's a really fun class because we got to cook some things with them. And one class I did a grocery store tour with them, which was also fun. So... That's a little bit of what has been going on with me. So yeah, I did that last night. That was a good time. Anna says that she's on episode 5 of season 2 of Stranger Things. And I feel like Will um, has a brand thing going on. Brand from Game of Thrones. Yeah, I guess you could say... it's kind. Of, I didn't really think about it that way, but it's kind of a, a similar thing. That's, that's a, good, a good observation. Um... And you, Anna says her and Dorian were dying laughing la laughing last night about it. Yeah, it is kind of a, a similar situation. I don't know if the rest of y'all watching are into Stranger Things. Um, I definitely am. Jason and I don't really binge watch shows at all. 
we probably take too long with a lot of shows actually what will happen is we'll watch a couple episodes and then like too long will go by and then we're like wait what was happening <laughs> um but stranger things is the one thing that we do kind of watch all at once we watched a couple episodes friday a couple episodes saturday and finish it up on sunday um and it was good so i enjoyed it i mean and to have a first season that's so good and then to come back with the second season like there's obviously a chance that things could not it could be a disappointment but i think they did a really good job okay so we've got all of our, our potatoes cut up i'm gonna grab a bowl for my scraps just so I can keep all of that stuff kind of collected while I'm chopping. Let's see. Um, BB says, is this a live stream or pre-recorded video? It is a live stream, so if you talk to me in the comments, I will talk back. <laughs> um, and Modern Day Family Man says, hey, hey, what are you cooking? So, for those of you who are just joining us, what we have going on right here, um, I've got the potatoes here that I just cut up and I've been piling up. So we're roasting these up and then we're gonna do like a sausage bok choy saute situation. So that's next. So right now I have the oven preheated at 425. Um, so that's still going and we'll see how that does. And we're gonna move these potatoes over to some pans. So let me, I'm going to get you guys facing right side up again. get you somewhat, you know, straight on as best I can with this. Oh, that's not quite right. Let's do a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, y'all can see what I'm doing now. So, um, I'm Rejoice Brown says hi, hello, I'm glad you're here. So, um, I can look at the comments here now. Just so you know, if you're just joining, I have a tablet over here, so when the camera is down and I'm chopping, I can still see what you're saying. Um, so, we've got the potatoes chopped up, now we need to get those ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna turn y'all this way so you can see over here what i have going on so the oven is preheating and then we have a couple sheet pans over there so i'm just going to take these potatoes and i'm going to distribute them evenly between the two sheet pans and when you're roasting things it's important not to crowd your pan because if there is too much stuff on there and it's all kind of piled up on top of itself then stuff won't really roast you know it won't get that nice brown caramelized thing going on it will um more steam which is fine but it's not what we're going for so it's not going to taste the way you want it to it's just not going to be as good so we're going to get these on here and then as far as what you put on your potatoes you can really do whatever you like it doesn't matter um but i'm going to show you what i like to do and kind of what's my go-to and then we can also talk about some options if you want to try something different at home so let me drive my hands a little bit and see what else y'all are saying in the comments if i've missed anything okay we're good to go so with your roasting the first thing you need is some sort of fat just to keep everything you know from sticking and also fat gives flavor so i'm using olive oil this is cassandrino's olive oil um i'm gonna put this on here you could use other things too um if you had bacon fat can work really good coconut oil um lard can work anything that's a solid fat obviously you're either going to melt it down beforehand or you're going to have to work that solid fat into the potatoes which i've done before and is fine but olive oil i think is the easiest because it's just liquid and right here for you to use so there's no like specific measurements or anything it's just drizzle a little bit on there so i'm gonna drizzle a little bit on the potatoes and that's kind of first step to roasting anything basic okay so olive oil out of the way next thing i'm going to add is some salt because salt is also important for flavor so just a little sprinkle of that over the top and this is something like this is kind of the basic like if you just wanted to roast something and not put any extra anything on it olive oil and salt would be the way to go. So that's kind of basic for everything. Modern Day Family Man asks, how do you know if you're buying good EVOO? Okay, good question. Um, so one thing you wanna look for is that it has a production date. Um, a lot of times oils will have a best buy date, but they don't actually tell you when they were produced or it might say bottled on this day, but you don't know, okay, when did it, 
actually get produced versus was this sitting around somewhere and then I got put in a bottle. So you want to have a production date on there. Um, another thing is, you know, if you look at your olive oil um, and the ingredients or things like that, you want it to be 100% olive oil and you want it to be olive oil from one source. So a lot of olive oils out there, it's just kind of like this mass production combination. It'll say, contains oils from any of the following and it'll list a bunch of different countries and so that's a, all these different olive oils all getting mixed together it's just kind of like this mystery thing um there's nothing wrong with it as far as like it's dangerous or anything but it's not that good quality which is what you're wanting so those are two good things to look for also you want to buy oils that are stored in dark bottles um because that helps protect the olive oil from getting damaged from light so if it's in like a clear bottle probably not the best one to choose um, so those are a couple things that you can look out for that can be helpful and I can see two kitties in a window back there that are having a lot of fun <laughs> it's pretty nice here today it's you know in the I don't know upper 60s low 70s so we have the windows open and the kitties love it when that happens okay so good question about the olive oil we've got our potatoes with the olive oil and salt on there so that's the first step then you can go in and add whatever you want so I always like to do garlic powder I just think that's delicious and a lot of times that's kind of where I stop it's just the garlic powder the salt and the olive oil so I'm gonna put that on there oh I just remembered I have some fresh rosemary in the fridge that I need to use up and Jason loves rosemary and that would be great on these potatoes so I'm gonna grab that real quick it should be fairly easy to get to hopefully um, okay here we go. I forgot all about this because I need a way to use it. So this will be a good way to use that up. Um, Anna wants to know where do you purchase that brand from? Cassandrinos, you can get it from their website. It's also available on Amazon. Um, and after the live stream is over, I can put a link for you uh, just so you can get to it. And just FYI, you know, it's an affiliate link which means it costs the same for you. But I get a little, a little something something for recommending it. Um, so that's where you can get this one and they are not currently sold in any in-person stores i don't think so their website or amazon are the two places for that um oh and our oven is preheated well it's excellent timing okay so we've got our rosemary i won't move the camera all around because that is just going to be too crazy to do that and then show you the next step but i'm gonna just gonna chop some of this i'm just ripping off the leaves not sure how much I want to use rosemary like fresh rosemary isn't something I work with as often I work a lot with basil cilantro those but rosemary I don't use as much and so you know we bought it because Jason loves it but then I'm always like uh I gotta more think about how I'm gonna use this just because it's not something that's in my repertoire as much like to use all the time so I did that whole stem I think that will be plenty and I'm just gonna run my knife through this really quickly you guys can see the side of my face while I do this. <laughs> and we will get that tossed in there too. Um, as far as other things you could put on the potatoes, uh, paprika can be good, um, chili powder, other herbs. So you could do dried rosemary, um, oregano could be good, thyme could be good. If you wanted to add a lemony flavor, you could add a little bit of lemon juice too. That could be good. I'm trying to think of other things I haven't mentioned. It's pretty much whatever you want, really, because um, potatoes can work with a lot of things. So I'm going to take this rosemary and sprinkle that over the top. Got a little bit more here on my cutting board. And I think that is going to add some really good flavor to our potatoes. Okay, so we've got that in there. <laughs> got my hair in my face. And the next thing you have to do is just toss it all together. So just want to get everything nice and evenly coated with the oil and the salt and whatever spices you're using if you're using any spices so just a little toss there I'm gonna do this pan as well and like I said this is the same thing you know for potatoes but also any type of vegetable you're roasting you know just oil salt any spices you want to use just kind of customize it and then you want to spread it out so that it's all in that nice even layer like I was talking about earlier okay so these are pretty spread out I'm gonna go wash the oil off my hands real quick talk amongst yourselves and then we'll get these in the oven and get on to the next step 
Okay, hands are washed. Now we're gonna pop these in the oven and we will start working on the rest of dinner. Whew, that is hot. And if you missed this at the beginning, this is preheated to 425 Fahrenheit, in case you don't use Fahrenheit. Uh, okay, so those are in, and I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes, because that's about how long this is going to take. And then while those are cooking, we're going to work on the rest of our dinner. So I'm going to get my other pan out here. Ooh. Okay, so I've got my big giant cast iron skillet right there. Let me check comments, see if I miss anything. Oh, Butterfly Planner is here, hello! Um, and Butterfly Planner says the potatoes are life, and I agree, they are one of my favorites. They're delicious. Okay, so we have our potatoes in the oven, and the next thing we're gonna do is work on our bok choy. So I'm gonna turn y'all back around this way, and we're pretty straight on there. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. There we go, okay. So, next thing is the bok choy. Now, bok choy, let me know in the comments, um, have you had bok choy before? Um, have you ever eaten it? And have you ever cooked with it yourself? How comfortable are you with it? All that kind of stuff. Because if you all want to know a little bit more about it, we can talk about it if you don't know a ton. Uh, but I have four bunches. Okay, Modern, Fam Modern Day Family Man says no idea what it is, so we have at least one person who is unsure. Um, anyone else? Does anyone else cook with it? If so, what do you use it in? Um, just so I have an idea of what y'all's familiarity is. Okay, Joshua Melman says, hey Sarah, yes I've eaten it with salmon and black rice, chopped it once. Butterfly Planner said, actually had some of my stir fry last night. I use it Okay, so we've got a little bit of a mix. Some people have tried it, but maybe haven't cooked with it a lot. Some people have no idea. Some people a little more experienced. So I'll give you all the rundown. Bok choy is a leafy green vegetable. Um, it's also sometimes called pak choy. Um, it's kind of like a, it's a leafy green and it comes in different varieties. So this is a small variety that is green all the way down. So it has these leaves at the top and then it's all bundled here at the bottom. You might find varieties in the grocery store that are much bigger, like this big, and you would only need like one head for this a meal like this that we're making. Um, sometimes the stem here is white, and then the leaves are dark green. Um, then again, you know, sometimes you find these that are all this light green color, so there are different varieties out there, but the main thing is this kind of bulb thing with the leaves. And it's in basically every grocery store, so if you're trying to find it, you should be able to. Uh, now the big thing with bok choy, um, this is one I got the farmer's market, so it came in these little bunches, and I got four of these bunches. The big thing with bok choy, and a lot of other leafy greens is it can get really gritty down in here because if you think about any sort of leafy green vegetable they are very close to the dirt as to as opposed to something like a pepper or a tomato that's growing on a plant that's already gotten pretty tall this is sitting right down there in the dirt so they get very gritty because of that and also because they have all these little nooks and crannies where the leaves all come together so it's a perfect place for dirt to get trapped in there so the big thing with any leafy green like this is you have to wash it well to make sure that you get all that grittiness out or you're going to be crunching on some stuff when you're eating so we don't want that to happen so the first thing with uh working with this is actually to chop it before we wash it because we want to get it all pulled apart so that all that dirt can get freed up and it isn't hanging out in our dinner. So with that said, I'm going to turn y'all back down so you can see the cutting board and we're going to chop through this and you can see how I do that. Also, um, I'm going to be putting it in a salad spinner and I'm going to show you, I think I'm going to take all over to the sink probably and show you kind of how I use this and how I wash it. Um, just so you know that it's happening. So I'm going to take the lid off of this and I'm going to take the basket out. And the hard thing with these live streams is having enough room for all of my stuff that's everywhere. Let me put some things away. I'm gonna put the garlic powder away. Um, I guess all this other stuff I really need. Okay, so we'll just pop that over there. Now I'm gonna get y'all facing the right direction. And that should be a pretty good angle, I'm thinking. I think y'all can see everything. I feel like maybe we could be up a little higher just so y'all aren't right in the bok choy's face okay that work 
I think so. Okay. And let me know, you know, if you need me to adjust or anything. But this is what we've got going on. So we've got the bok choy here. And you can do one at a time. When they're small like this, I find, you know, that you can at least bunch two together. And then you're just going to cut straight across. And so you get these little ribbons. And so the top here is very leafy, as you can see, and more delicate. And then as we get down here, it gets a little more crunchy. So that's kind of a nice thing about bok choy, too, is you have these two different textures going on, which can be really nice. And then you can see down here at the bottom, you just kind of keep chopping until you get to the end. So we've got the crunchy bits, and we've got the leafy bits, and those are all going to get cooked together. So we've got that chopped. I'm going to drop it over here in my bowl of the salad spinner, and then we're just going to work through all of our bok choy just like that. And I've got a nice little pile here, so y'all get to see me do this a lot. Again, we're holding our knife with our thumb and our forefinger. Um, you know, in our hand, we have a good grip, and it's nicely balanced. And then we're just working our way down, and we are protecting our fingers by, you know, curling them up, which I'm not going to lie, that is the one thing with knife skills that I'm not always great at, and it's why I feel like I am high risk to end up cutting myself on one of these live streams. So, you know, keep coming back, and one day you might get to see something really dramatic. Okay. And let me know if y'all have any other um, questions about the food or just like questions you want to ask me, nutrition questions, whatever, because I'm happy to chat with y'all about that stuff too and answer your questions. Joshua Mellum says, had to see you chopping the, hard to see you chopping the end with that angle. Okay, let me see if I can maybe turn y'all a little bit up more. Or maybe put you a little higher. How is that? I think that might be better. I think so. Okay, let me know. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just work our way through these. And I really like bok choy. Um, it, it has a pretty mild flavor, I think. Uh, but unlike some other leafy greens, it doesn't have that kind of, like, earthy flavor like for me at least I mean I know a lot of people love Swiss chard I'm not a big fan of it um just because the flavor is a little bit too earthy for me same with beet greens I don't really care for those very much either um and you know y'all know I pretty much like everything but those don't really do it for me but the bok choy doesn't have that that kind of earthy thing going on that those vegetables have so I like it better okay do another one we're just going across, doing our little ribbons. Um, oh, and you're all saying that the angle is much better. So that's good. When is bok choy in season? So bok choy is in season. That question is from Joshua Mellum. Bok choy is in season in the spring and in the fall. So I got this at the farmer's market this past Saturday. Um, and I mean, if you have those types of seasons, depending on where you are, um, you might not have four seasons. But you know, it's one of those cooler weather crops, same like other leafy greens like lettuces or um, Swiss chard or kale or anything like that, collards. So collards can stand the heat a little bit more, but these are gonna be available when it's a little bit cooler out. Okay. And Butterfly Planner said, I've never had it raw, always cook with it. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever worked with it raw either. I always saute it. Um, but I'm sure you could pop it in a salad or something if you wanted a little bit of a crunch. Modern Day Family Man says, cut those fingers. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. But, you know. Curl. curl. I know, I'm trying to curl them. Jason. Curl those fingers. Oh, he said curl those fingers. Oh, ha, <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> Well, same thing, kind of. Um, yeah. Let's hope that. That never happens on one of, ever, but especially on a live stream, because I feel like that would be pretty crazy. But, you know, I just feel like statistically, the odds are with me talking and reading comments and <laughs> cutting things that there's, there's a good chance of it happening sometime. Butterfly Planner says, hi, Jason. Yeah, Jason is not on camera. He, he says hi back. Uh, but he is actually working on a Cats and Pats video right now. If you don't know, my husband Jason has a channel. It's called Cats and Pats, and it is all about kitty cats, tips for pet owners, um, you know, different common topics, issues you might have, and also DIYs, like DIY toys for your cats, things like that. 
Um, this time of year when it's really cold, he has a DIY cat shelter video. So if you have like an outdoor cat or a feral cat that lives near your home, um, so you know they can't get in out of the elements, he has a tutorial over there so you can build them a shelter to go into. He built one, um, you know, like if you have a cat at your work or something or in your neighborhood, then that can be a good thing for that. So shout out to Jason. Um, Dom says, hi, what are you making? So Dom, we've got some potatoes roasting in the oven. Uh, just got those in there about 10 minutes ago and we are making to go with it a bok choy and sausage saute is what I'm calling it. Um, so we're cutting up the bok choy now and then we're gonna work on getting that rinsed off here in a little bit. And let's see, Joshua says about knife skills, do you hone or sharpen your knife regularly? Not regularly, I mean, if you have a good knife and you take good care of it, it's not something you should have to do all the time. I do have a little sharpener that sometimes I run them through. Um, but one thing that I've talked about before on live streams is you wanna make sure if you are scraping with your knife that you use the back of it. Like if you're scraping things towards you, uh, a lot of times people will use the blade and kind of scrape like this, but you're, you know, banging your knife on the cutting board. Um, when you're doing that at this like weird angle and you're dragging it across and that can be not so good for it. So scraping with the back is a thing you can do that can be helpful. Hey Jason. Yeah. Uh, my thing just popped up and said that the tablet is low on battery. Could you get me uh, a cord for that? Thank you. Uh, I couldn't do this without Jason. Okay, let me, I'm gonna turn y'all back I wanna up. Producer Are you okay with being on camera right now? Uh, okay. Hey, we're back this way. Okay, so we got the bok choy chopped. Now, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta start thinking about the things that are going in our pan, the other things we're cooking, and we've gotta get the bok choy rinsed off. And Jason's gonna get me, oh, you brought an ex uh, a surge protector. Good, okay, but I'm gonna answer a few more of your questions before we go on to the next thing. And I can look here now, because we're straight, straight up, okay. Josh, Josh, Joshua, I can talk. Joshua Melvin says, yes, safe fingers are top priority. And then comments, <laughs> try to remember that. Um, <laughs> Butterfly Planner says, yay, Cats and Pats is awesome. Thanks, I think it's pretty awesome too, but I might be a little biased. Um, oh, Cats and Pats getting in here in the comments. <laughs> keep, keep it to cooking, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I think um, awesome. awesome, okay. Oh, Modern Day Family Man says, gotta go. Good to see you guys. Good to see you too, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, while Jason's getting me hooked back up here, um, trying to think of what is the best order to do things in so we're being efficient, but also so I'm not having some sort of catastrophe during the live stream and things are burning. I don't accidentally cut through the charging cable. Okay, I won't cut through the cable. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is move over um, to the sink so I can show you how to do the bok choy, how to wash it, so. Y'all, this is a live stream first for me. I've never taken y'all on such a journey. The most I've ever done is turn the camera. So this might be a disaster, but we're gonna try. Grab, okay. Are, right. you, are you okay with this? You think this will work? Yeah, yeah. You guys are gonna see the ceiling a little bit there. I'm gonna see what you look like. I'm gonna bring you over here to the sink. Whew, okay, good. You guys can see all of our dishes in the draining rack. This is fun. Um, Give you a little, okay, I think that will be good. You can see my gross sponge, everything you'd ever want to see in my kitchen, right? What, you go and start washing all this position here. Okay. We're trying to get the sink right. more. Yeah, that's good, I think. Okay, you so. You have a Frank's Red Hot sponsorship on. I know, for real. Shout out to the <laughs> Franks. Franks wants to try to hook me up. Okay, so with the bok choy, like I talked about, lots of grit and stuff in here. So first thing I'm gonna do is fill this up with water. And hopefully the water is not too loud. But this is the reason I like the salad spinner so much. Because this process honestly can kind of be a pain in the butt if you um, don't have the salad spinner to help you out. And I feel like it makes it people not as excited to do things like bok choy or whole heads of lettuce uh, when you don't have the salad spinner to make the situation a lot easier. And I was resistant to the salad spinner, but then I realized how good it can be. So, I actually got it at mine at Target, and it was um, 
a little bit on sale, and so that's what pushed me to finally go ahead and get one. Okay. So now, can y'all see pretty well? I think that's a pretty good angle. Okay, so we've got the bok choy in here. And let me know in the comments if y'all have other questions as we go, but I'm just going to talk you through this. So just want to run your fingers in here. I'm just kind of like zhuzhing it and shaking it around. And you want a good about a bit of water in here so it's kind of floating and the dirt can separate and kind of float out on its own. So just kind of shimmy shake it all around here. Oh, that rosemary though. Oh, can you smell it that in the oven? That's strong. I like it. Good, good. Okay. If you weren't here earlier, we put some rosemary on the potatoes, and that is one of Jason's favorite flavors. Okay, so I've kind of zhuzhed it up a little bit. Now I'm actually going to take this out of the sink, and we. this is where the um, basket part of the salad spinner comes in. Okay. So we've got this here, and now we're going to take our bok choy and kind of grab it out by the handfuls and drop it in the basket. And so we're just getting that bok choy kind of strained and separated from the water. The reason I do it by the handful like this instead of pouring it on is because if you pour it on, then you're gonna be pouring along with the water all the dirt that we've tried to separate out of here. So, you know, just take your handfuls and do this and then we'll be able to see how much dirt is left over. And going to look at comments, Joshua Melman says, do you have any tips for dealing with the mental fear of chopping with a sharp knife? Curl fingers, go slow, of course, but getting over that mental fear. Um, that's an interesting question. I don't know if I've ever had that question before. Um, hmm. I mean, I think one thing to know is that the sharper your knife, the safer you actually are. So a lot of times people think, oh, sharp knife, that's scary. But a dull knife is what is really scary because a sharp knife is going to cut through whatever you're cutting very easily. And so you're not going to come against a lot of resistance. You're not going to have to really muscle it or use a lot of pressure. And so that's safe. But if you have a dull knife, then you're going to have to kind of like put a lot of force behind it and it might slip and all this stuff and that's when you can actually cut yourself so first thing being prepared knowing that a sharp knife is going to be safer i think also just kind of maybe doing some practice starting with small things and testing it out i mean i wouldn't you know if you're worried about char chopping with a knife i think practice is kind of the big thing and start with things that maybe are a little easier and practice really makes perfect and also don't feel like you have to rush like you're not on iron chef you don't have to be cute and like do things really fast or like be in a hurry. Take your time with it and the more you do it, the better you'll get, the easier it will get. Um, and I think that will help you build up your confidence. Uh, but know that, you know, as long as you are doing those safe things, you're probably not going to cut yourself as long as you're paying attention and being aware. Um, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you had any other questions about that. Okay, so we've got the bok choy in the basket. Now I'm going to kind of put that to the side. And we're gonna pour out all of our water. As you can see, there's a lot of like dirt and stuff floating around in here. So we're gonna pour this off. And you can see there's even some grit here on the inside of the bowl. I don't know if that's really showing up on camera, but I believe me, there's dirt in here. So I'm gonna do a little swirl to get rid of that. And then we're gonna wash our bok choy again. So I'm gonna dump all this back in here because with these kinds of vegetables, you're gonna need to do this at least twice and depending on how dirty it is, you know, maybe three, maybe four times. So just to kind of know, and obviously I'm doing this a lot slower than I do normally because I'm chatting with y'all and answering your questions and trying to demo and all that sort of thing. Um, so this goes faster than what you're seeing now, but it is something you have to do, but you can see why the salad spinner makes this so much easier because, you know, if you were having to do this in your sink and drain your sink every time, it's just kind of like a pain. And even with a big bowl, you know, having this kind of built-in strainer is really nice. So I'm gonna fill this up with water again. We're gonna let that fill up to the top. Um, Josh Joshua Melman says that helps, thanks, you're welcome. Butterfly Planner says, also sharper knives make cutting and chopping easier. Most people have accents with dull knives, yeah. Uh, the dull knife will get you, so get a good knife. It doesn't have to be like a bajillion dollars, but you know, get one that's good. I like the knives I use are Global. I think they're pretty good. Uh, that's the brand, Global Knives. I talk about those in my um, like favorite cooking tools. So if you find that video, I talk about those a little bit more there. 
Now we got this filled up. We're gonna do our little zhuzhy thing again, just to kind of loosen up any dirt that might be in there. I know this is riveting. Riveting to watch me <laughs> wash bok choy, but it's part of making tonight's dinner. So, and if you've never worked with bok choy, I hope that you all find this informational and educational. Okay, so we've done our little zhuzh. Now we're gonna take it out. And we are going to transfer again. I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time because y'all know what the deal is. And this is the, this salad spinner is the OXO or OXO brand. I think this is their small one. They also have a larger one, but this is usually adequate for most things I'm doing. But you know, I'm cooking for two people uh, but I usually make four to six portions with our meals and then we just eat a lot of leftovers. So this still might be good for a family, but if you do a lot of leafy greens, I mean, this was the only size I saw when I went shopping. I wasn't aware that there was a larger one. If I had known, maybe I would have gotten that, but this one is definitely adequate almost always for what we're doing. Sometimes it's a little, a little bit of a close call. I kind of have it overstuffed a little bit, but usually works fine. Okay, so now we're gonna transfer that out, pour out our water. And I'm not really seeing any dirt. So since I'm not seeing any dirt left behind, that's how I know that it's clean. I'm just gonna do a final rinse. Um, if I saw more dirt, then I would give it another rinse. So that's just kind of how you know. If there's still stuff coming out, then that means you need to wash it some more. So now I've set this down, the straining part into the salad spinner, and I'm gonna move this over to the table and then move y'all back over to the table too. Okay, so. I'm going to pick you up first so you don't have to look at my kitchen floor. And then, this is the real test, y'all. We made it over to the sink safely. Can we make it back? Okay. Oh. All right, we did it. Perfect. Okay, let me get you straight on again. Let me just put my hand over the camera. That was, that was terrible. Okay. <laughs> Um, Jason, could you get the iPad set back up over here, plugged in? Thanks. Love you. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Questions. Questions. Butterfly Planner says, I'm a knife snob. I love my Henkel knives. Um, yes. Joshua Melman says, do you use a knife steel or sharpener? I have this little thing my parents got off QVC. It's like, I don't know, it's like this little like V of blades and then you pull the knife through it. I don't use it that much. I don't even know. It's called a Cleva Sharp. Sponsor. I don't know. Sponsor I mean, Cleva. I am not an expert on sharpening knives, that's for sure. But basically, it just kind of suctions and then you pull your knife through. You can see there's like two little blades there and then you pull your knife through it. And after I do it, they seem sharper. So this is a sharpener. I don't have like the steel honer. Um, from what I understand, honers straighten the blade, whereas sharpeners kind of get off any little extra bits and make it actually sharper. Uh, so that's a difference there, but you know, you can also take your knives if you have really good knives and you wanna like keep them forever, you can take them to like some sh knife expert and get them to do it. I'm not quite at that level, uh, but this is, you know, I use this and it seems to work. So that's my uh, un-knife expert opinion on that. Uh, <laughs> Butterfly Planner says we were going for a ride again. Yeah, but taking y'all around the kitchen, it seems to work okay. Um, Okay, so Joshua Melman asks, without a salad spinner, what's the easiest way? If you did it, the washing the bok choy without a salad spinner, a big bowl would probably be good and then having your colander next to it and kind of going back and forth. But the salad spinner really helps when it comes time to dry it. So, got everything in here, you can see, um, and got our lid. So I gotta push, let me turn y'all, I wonder if I could kind of turn you this way, a little bit up higher maybe. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so y'all might not be able to see that well because this thing's pretty tall, but I'm gonna move some of my lettuce out of the way or some of my bok choy. Yeah, this is not working. This is not working. Change of plans, we're going back this way. This is the fun of the live stream. You never know what's gonna happen and I'm just figuring it out with you. Okay, so. We've got the lid on here because this is not going to be able to show you on the thing. So basically the way salad spinner works, if you don't have one, is you put the lid on and then you pump this thing and I'll try to do it. Oh, look, it's spinning. 
okay? So what this does is it pulls the water out, which also makes this whole process easier because you don't have to be drying your leafy greens. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. And this can be a fun thing if you have kids, you know? I feel like kids love a good salad spinner. Um, so you just kind of spin the thing and it has a little stopper here. And then you can see there is, you might not be able to see, let me pull this up. A lot of water under there, look at that, how nice. So I'm gonna take this over to the sink real quick and pour this water out, okay? And then, you know, you can do it a couple times and get all the excess water out. All right, so that is dried. I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it over here to the side. And the next thing we're going to do is start getting stuff into our pan. Um, okay, so we need to cut up an onion. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of... Actually, let's cut the onion first. Okay, so I'm gonna turn y'all to face down again. Now I've done onions before on these live streams, but I know there's always different people here and it also doesn't hurt to have another tutorial on this, how to cut an onion. That's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so onion. Big thing with the onion is you wanna get a nice even dice so all of you know your onion bits are the same size. So the first thing you do is you cut off the top like that. Then once you have the top cut off, you're going to cut it straight down the middle from top to bottom. And this is good because now we have two flat sides that can sit down on a cutting board. So we're going to peel off our onion outer skin. Toss that in my compost bowl. Get that peeled off. And we'll do the same with the other half. And I can answer some of y'all's questions too while I do this. Um, Butterfly Planner says that they used to work in the kitchen department of Macy's and learned way too much. <laughs> no, that's good. Doesn't hurt to have knowledge about, about cooking stuff. Um, okay, so with our onion, this is how we cut an onion. So we've got the flat side. Now you're going to take your knife and you are going to move parallel to the cutting board. And you're cutting across like this, okay? So that's cut one way. Then you're gonna turn your onion and you're gonna make these cuts perpendicular to your cutting board. So going from top to bottom on the onion. Turn it back this way and then you cut across. You can see we're getting a nice even cut and it's very easy. And then once you get here to kind of this end and it's a little unstable, flip it over and cut this way and kind of lob off the ends and boom there you go and you've just got that left over so that's one half of the onion and I'm starting to get a little teary-eyed because that's what onions do unfortunately there are some tricks to get rid of onion tears one is to wear goggles um, one is to put it in the freezer beforehand. I do that a lot of times, though I did not do it this time and I'm regretting it now. Jason, I might need you to bring me some tissues. <laughs> um, and another thing you can do is pour some vinegar on your cutting board and that will, um, then when you set that flat cut side of the onion down in the vinegar, that kind of helps neutralize some of those compounds that make you want to cry. Okay, I'm gonna wash the onion off my hands. And Jason also says hello. Let me wipe away some of my tears. Um, <laughs> let me get y'all basin straight back in. You can see I might look a little sad now. I'm not sad, I just chopped onions. Okay. That. The hardest thing about these live streams is getting y'all readjusted. Okay. Let me wipe away my onion tears. Whew. That hasn't happened in a while because I almost always put it in the freezer beforehand. But I did not do that this time. And I'm paying the price. Okay. Onion tears gone. Now we are going to start cooking stuff on the stove top. And our potatoes, the timer is going to go off for our potatoes soon, but I'll probably just turn the oven off and keep those in there because they're pretty forgiving. All right, so I am going to turn y'all to face the stove top now so you can see what I'm doing over here. Okay, so I've got some bacon fat here is what I'm going to use. You don't need too much since we are going to be working with sausage later and that's pretty fatty. 
uh, but we need a little bit to saute our onions in. And you know, you could use another cooking fat, you could use butter, but I just have this um, in my fridge from when I made bacon. That's not gonna be quite enough. So let me get a little bit more, because I think I have another jar. It's not like every anytime I make bacon, it just goes in a jar and they just hang out in the fridge until they get used up. Okay, put that to the side. Where's that other jar? Oh. Boom. Okay, found it. So we're gonna put our fat down in our pan and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to medium heat. You could use, you know, like a stainless steel skillet, that would work too. This cast iron one is the biggest one I have, which means it needs quite a bit of fat because it's a pretty big surface, but that should be good. Ooh, potatoes are done, I'm gonna turn that off and turn the oven off. Okay, I think that will be enough cooking fat for what we're doing, so got that down in the pan. I'm still sniffing from crying from my onions. I'm gonna put the spoon over here. Okay, and then we can start cooking. So, oh, let me get the hot handle thing for this too. Where is that? This drawer? Yeah. So, these are kind of nice if you have cast iron skillets and you want something to put on your Christmas list or just to buy for yourself, these little like handle covers things, it's like a silicone rubbery thing. You can put it on your handle because you know, when you cook with cast iron, the whole thing gets hot and then you grab it and you burn yourself. So this makes it so you can still hold on to your handle, which is really nice. Let me see. Okay, y'all are being pretty quiet in the comments now. So I'm just gonna keep working on this food. If you have other questions, let me know. I'm gonna get this fat spread around the pan and all of the other stuff that we've had now is all just kind of going to go in this pan together in stages. So we've got a little bit of a lag because I probably should have started heating up this oil sooner. So that was a little off on my timing. Oh, Hillcross Farm Kristen says, yay, I caught you live. Hey, glad you could be here. Um, right now what we're doing, if for you and anyone else who's just hopped on, We've got roasted potatoes in the oven. Um, so those just finished actually. I'm just gonna let them hang out in the oven for a little bit longer. And then we're about to do our bok choy and sausage in the skillet. And Kristen also says, I hope you feel better. Thank you, I really appreciate it. I am feeling much, much better than I was a couple days ago, which is nice. It's nice to be feeling a little bit more like myself um, and not be constantly drinking tea or uh, blowing my nose or anything like that. So that's good. But now I am sniffling because I just cut up that onion. Okay, so we've got our fat in here. Ooh, yeah, that's hot. Okay, we can put in our onion now. Hillcross Farm Kristen says, oh good, tis the season. Yeah, a lot of people have been getting sick, I think. Just like people I know in real life as well as just people I follow online. And I wish this oil was a little hotter. I would expect us to get a little sizzle, but honestly, I probably jump the gun a little bit on that because I want to get this done for y'all so you don't just have to sit and watch me ramble while oil heats up in my pan. <laughs> okay, let me find spatula. I am gonna check on the potatoes real quick. Ooh, those look good. Okay, I'll let those just hang out in there for a little bit. And yeah, let me know, do y'all have any questions while we're kind of hanging out here for a little bit and you've got my undivided attention while this pan heats up, I'd be happy to answer anything you have. Um, let me also check my battery while we have this little waiting time. Oh yeah, I'm doing good, okay. I don't wanna leave y'all randomly, um, but it is starting to heat up a little bit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I did, make Hall I did get to make Halloween cookies on Halloween, but I still haven't iced them. <laughs> Me and Jason were making them. It took a lot longer than I expected and then it was like 11 o'clock and we're like, what's going on? Why are we still making cookies? Uh, so we kind of set them to the side and then I was going to try to, I, I didn't have time yesterday. I thought maybe I'd get to today, but we're out of milk. So, and I need milk to make the icing, which that's my fault because I went grocery shopping yesterday. I was talking earlier about how I was teaching that class last night for Dr. Yum and um, I went grocery shopping ahead of time and so most of my stuff could stay in the car because it wasn't hot outside and I had my little cooler bags but I wanted to bring the milk inside so I brought it into the kitchen and popped it in the fridge and I was like no I can't remember to bring this home when I leave and I forgot it so I'm gonna have to go pick that up sometime but I didn't have milk to make the icing so I couldn't ice my cookies so they're just sitting over there in a container 
Hopefully I get to ice them maybe tomorrow or Saturday and we'll eventually eat them. You know, eating Halloween cookies a few days after Halloween, it's still okay. You can really eat them anytime, I guess. But probably in the future I should make them a few days ahead of time so we can be a little more thematic. Um, Hellcross Farm Kristen says, Sarah, I watched a really informative video on smoking points of oil. Can you share your opinion on safest oils for high heat? Good question. And while you're asking that, our oil is starting to heat up. So before I answer, we're going to add a little bit of salt to our onions. And this is something I talked about on one of my other live streams. When you're cooking, it's a good idea to salt in layers. So if you add all of your salt at the end or add it at the table, it just kind of tastes salty. But if you add it when you're cooking in stages, then it actually enhances the flavors and really brings out um, the best of the ingredients in the pan and makes it, enhances the natural flavors that are there rather than just tasting saltier. So we're going to add a little bit of sprinkle of salt to our onions. And then salting in layers just means that you kind of salt as each ingredient gets added a little bit with each thing rather than dumping all the salt that you want to use in at the very end. And then we'll start tossing this around. So as far as smoke points of oil, um, that's a really good point. Different oils are better for different types of cooking. So for example, coconut oil has a high smoke point. And all that means is that it can get up to a higher temperature before it starts smoking. And once an oil starts smoking, that's kind of when it's reached its limit and it starts to get damaged and things like that. So coconut oil is a higher heat cooking fat. Um, peanut oil is also one. So that's why, like when you see um, like deep fry, like when people deep fry a turkey at Thanksgiving, that uses peanut oil because it's a higher heat cooking fat. Um, Lard is a good one. If I'm doing making like fried chicken, that's what I use as my cooking fat, um, which I actually need to render some more. I have this like big hunk of lard down in my freezer, but I need to pull it up and thaw it and cut it up and do the whole rendering thing, which it's, you know, a little bit of a project, but then you have several jars and I don't need to do it for like another six to nine months. I just haven't gotten around to it. So those are some higher heat ones. Olive oil is one that's a little more delicate, so that's better for like salad dressings or raw things. But it's okay to use it for other things too. Like I used it to roast my vegetables, that's fine. And if you look at cultures that have olive oil, they do use it in cooking, like in Italian food. It's used as the oil, like if you're, you know, sauteing something or making a sauce. So I think that's also something to look at. It's how people have typically used oils. Um, but like if you're doing stir frying where you want that pan really hot, Something like coconut oil might be a better option uh, for something like that because it can handle that higher heat. So we've got our onions in the pan and they're just hanging out, getting cooked down a little bit and sauteed. I saw there were a few more questions coming in. Let's see. Um, Joshua Melman says, how do you find a healthy sausage, sausage of processed food? Okay, so good question. So the sausage we're using today is a chorizo. It's about a pound. It's in this package here. Um, so when you're looking for meat products in general, and let me see, I thought I saw, oh, Kristen says, interesting, we raise grass-fed bulls, and I save the tallow, which is beef fat, um, for cooking. So that's another animal fat that you can use. Um, so with something like sausage, or really animal products in general, um, it's all about the quality of the meat. So for pork, for example, you want to find like pasture raised or forested pork, basically pork that is living in an environment that mimics, you know, what it naturally would be doing. So pigs like to hang out in the woods and root around for acorns and all that kind of stuff. So getting pork from someone locally preferably so you can kind of talk to them and see what they're doing um i think kind of the like most popular farm that does this sort of thing and it's kind of the inspiration and the model for a lot of other people is polyface farms they're a farm here in virginia actually which is really cool because i when i went to college they were about 45 minutes away from my university so i was able to go there and visit and stuff which is really fun um because when the animals are living in their natural environment they're a lot healthier and so therefore the final product is a lot healthier. Now with the concerns about sausage, um, with things like that specifically, sausage, bacon, it's not the meat itself, it's the processing. So, you know, the different like curing agents that are used, um, 
a food being smoked, those are things. But the thing with that, like a lot of people hear, oh, those kinds of meats uh, have an increased risk for colon cancer. And this was a big thing in What the Health, actually, if you saw that documentary. Made a whole video about that if you want to watch it. Uh, but the thing with those types of animal products that are processed in that way, curing, smoking, that sort of thing, um, you know, the big number that gets toted is that, oh, if you eat 50 grams of processed meats per day, then that increases your risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. And that sounds like really scary, crazy, like 18%, that's a lot. Okay, but what it's kind of a statistics thing. So that 18% is the relative risk, not the absolute risk. And like I said, I talk about this more in that video. So if you want, if, I feel like this is a kind of a thing you need to hear several times before you really understand it because it is a little bit like playing with numbers. Um, and can be a little co be a little bit complicated, especially without like examples and like numbers and me writing things out for you. But with that, all that means is that it's an 18% increase from what your risk would be if you weren't doing those things. So the risk for getting colon cancer already, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but something like around 4% or something. So your increased risk is based 18% more of that. So it brings it up to 5% risk. The absolute risk goes from 4% to 5%. And that's if you're eating 50 grams of processed meat every single day. So when you put it into that perspective, it helps you kind of, oh, like having sausage sometimes isn't a big deal. <laughs> um, and I think the other thing too is it might help you actually before these onions burn. Before I continue to go on on this train of thought, I'm gonna get the sausage in the pan. So I'm gonna bring the trash can over next to me so I can put the wrappings and I need to get some scissors. Uh, where are the food scissors? They should be in this drawer, but I can't find them. And I don't know where they are. Uh, hmm, okay. The food scissors. The food scissors? The food scissors. To cut open the sausage. I mean, we can use the regular scissors, but I didn't wash them earlier when I did the dishes. I say use a knife. You say use a knife. No. Okay. Jason says use a knife. Can you grab me, uh, like... Here's a junkie knife. Uh, will that work? Maybe this not. is going to be another episode oh. of Sarah Stabs Herself. Did you put them in there, maybe? No. They're gone forever, Sarah. Go on forever. Okay, well, I'm just going to use a knife. But typically, I would use it. Actually, this knife works pretty well. Look at that. Full of good ideas. That one of the cats is yeah, like. Yeah, I think you can see me through the window. Through our other window. It's just, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we've got the sausage open. Um. And I will get this in the pan, and then we will keep talking about the sausage and whether or not it's going to kill us all. Okay. Wrap her in the trash. Extra wrapping stuff in the trash. And this is a chorizo sausage, so I'm not going to be adding any more spices to this because it's sausage, it already has stuff added in, and it's already spicy, so it doesn't really need anything else. Um, but I'm just going to kind of break that off and plop it in the pan in little pieces and get that cooking down. And now I'm going to go wash off my hands real quick. I told anybody about the ski line LaCroix. What? I told anybody about the ski line LaCroix. I did mention it in my favorites video, but if you want to talk about it, feel free. Go well, I don't, I don't have anything to say about it. I just thought, oh. I just thought the people should know. Okay, okay. Oh. We can talk about that. No, in my, uh, in my current favorites video, I talked about how the new key lime LaCroix flavor is really, really good. If you like LaCroix, good stuff. Okay. And I hope y'all can still hear me over the crackling sausage. <laughs> um, so, with the relative absolute risk thing. So, something that might be a little bit easier to understand. Say that your risk for a disease was 90%. Like, everyone on planet Earth, like, baseline, their risk for getting X disease is 90%. And they come out, some company comes out with a pill 
And if you take this pill, it will reduce your risk by 50%. So the 50% is the relative risk and the 90% is the absolute risk. So if you went from 90% and brought that down by 50%, they'd be down to 45. That's a big change. And I'd be like, yeah, that's totally worth it to like take this pill, you know, considering the other side effects. Um, if it's gonna bring me from 90% to 45%, that's pretty significant. On the other hand, say your risk for a disease was 1% and there was a pill you could take and it would reduce your risk for this disease by 50%. So 50% is the relative risk, 1% is the absolute risk. So that's bringing it down from 1% to half a percent. Really not that big of a deal, especially if the pill has side effects, you consider the cost of the pill, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the same thing with this processed meat thing. It's an 18% increase, but the initial number is pretty small. And you still have to eat a pretty large quantity of processed meats to even reach that. So having something that's smoked now and again, having something that's salted now and again, not that big of a deal in terms of your overall health. And you also have to consider the other factors. What else are you eating? Um, you know, what does the diet look like overall? It's never just one thing. It's the big picture and looking at your overall pattern of eating. Okay, I'm gonna break this sausage up a little bit. And then we'll do some more comments and questions. Butterfly Planner says, this is why I wish Sarah lived closer, closer she sings while doing things like me. Yes. It's always better if you put it into song. Um, Inca Han asks, have you ever cut sausage open and used the sausage meat for meatball? Um, yeah, that's something you can do. I'm not a big, like, meatball person. Not that I don't like them, but it's never something that I've really made a lot. Um, as far as my cooking, it's just not something I do very often. But that would be fine. This was actually just a ground sausage in a package, no casing. I do have some in the basement that are in casing. And the all the sausage that I use, all the pork I use, comes from the half a hog share that Jason and I got at the beginning of this year. We've done this before and it was a good experience. We did it again this year. But basically we buy all of our pork from a local farmer up front. It's a little bit cheaper because we're buying so much all at one time and then we just fill up our chest freezer with it. And then when I'm doing my meal planning or when we need to find something to cook, I can just go down to my freezer. So that half a hog is plenty of pork for us to last for an entire calendar year. Um, so I think that's the other thing is putting it into perspective. Again, how much of these things are you eating? And obviously that whole share isn't just sausage. Um, it's also fresh pork things like pork chops or roasts or things like that. There's also some bacon in there, um, you know, different different types of cuts. So that's something else you have to keep in mind. And I think also considering like smoking and curing is just a pretty normal way to prepare food, especially it's pretty recent that we've had refrigeration, um, you know, to keep our, and you know, freezers to keep our food good and from spoiling. So for a lot of cultures, you know, smoking and curing meats could be a part of your traditional cuisine. And I think that's something else we also have to pay attention to is like, what kinds of foods are part of your culture? What kind of parts of food are part of your tradition or your family heritage? Like, I definitely don't think that, you know, we don't need to be totally eliminating things if they also have a cultural significance or a, some sort of sentimental value within your family or something like that. We kind of, we have to take all of that stuff into consideration when we're making our food choices. Okay, so the sausage is looking pretty good. It's getting cooked. I'm gonna let this go a little bit longer. Let's see. Um, Inga Han says, do you have any good, healthy, cheap student food you would recommend? Um, I mean, dry rice, brown rice, and dry beans. That is cheap eats right there. Uh, that's probably the cheapest thing you can get. And it's a good way for anyone, really, if you're trying to stretch your budget. Um, lentil, dry lentils, things like that are always good. They're very affordable. They're filling. They're nutritious. Um, 
So those are good things to have on hand and just to learn to feel comfortable cooking rice and cooking beans. And, you know, lots of cuisines are have, you know, variations on rice and beans because they're kind of universal foods. Like, every culture kind of has their different beans that they might use, um, but there's a lot of different options. So depending on what kind of spices and things you use, you can really change it up. Um, another thing, I think, for cooking on a budget eating things in season, going to your local farmer's market. Things are cheaper generally when they're not being shipped from, you know, a million miles away. So that's good. And also, if you get to know your local farmers, I get free stuff at the farmer's market all the time because they see me every week. They know that I'm there to do my grocery shopping. I'm not there to, like, buy one head of broccoli and then leave. Like, this is where I'm getting my food. So when I go in there, I all the time, last week, we got a bunch of cilantro, a bunch of mint for free. We got a free apple. Um, when I was a student, I actually volunteered at the farmer's market uh, where my college was. And that was a great gig because not only did I have fun because I still love the farmer's market, but a lot of times I would get stuff for free because the vendors would be like, hey, you helped me out today. I've got this lettuce that didn't sell. It's not going to last until next week. You know, it's going to go bad. Take it. It's like, thanks. That's awesome. Also, I'm um, going to the farmer's market at the end. So if you go to the beginning of the market, that's when you're going to have the best pick of everything, right? Because no one else has been there. Everything's laid out. So that can be good. But if you're, you know, on a budget, going at the end can be good because that's when the farmers kind of know, okay, no one else is coming. If this stuff didn't sell and I don't have a market tomorrow or whatever, it might be better for me to sell it at a reduced price or give someone a deal if they're buying in bulk or whatever um, rather than lose that food. So... That can be another way to go about it. You're not going to have the selection, but you can get a good deal. And I think in general, just learning how to cook is um, a big thing for eating on a budget because then you don't have to buy stuff pre-chopped, pre-cooked, convenience foods, which are convenient and can be nice, but if you're trying to save money, they do eat up a big chunk of your money. Let's see how these potatoes look in the oven. They still look fine, so I'm just going to leave them in there because that's easier than finding a spot on the, stove, on the table right now. So our sausage is pre-cooked. Now we're going to add in our bok choy. Let me check my battery. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone, I think, just so y'all don't lose me. Get a cable. Okay. I've got an extra battery pack here for just this situation so we don't get interrupted. Okay, now we're plugged in. All right, so now all that bok choy that we washed, we're going to get that down in the pan. And we might get a little bit of a sizzle here because there's still a little bit of water on these, so heads up, but maybe not. And we might have to do this in stages. We'll see how much will fit in the pan at once because this is a lot of bok choy. It was four bunches, and each bunches had three bok choy in there. And I didn't add any salt to the sausage because that already, like I said, has salt and spices and things in there. But we will salt the bok choy once it's in. I think we might just be able to kind of get it all barely in here without overflowing, which is nice because that means we don't have to do it in stages. Okay, Keep the last little bits out of the bottom. I think that's, that's good. Okay, so put this down. And now we're going to salt our bok choy. So, again, salting in layers. Makes the food taste better um, because it actually has some time to work with the food as opposed to adding it all at the end of your recipe. So this is a, a lot of bok choy, so I'm going to add a few sprinkles here. That should be good. And I mean, with salt, I never use measurements. I just kind of know from cooking how much I need. Um, so it's kind of one of those things you learn and also your personal preference. But, you know, err on the side of caution. You can, you know, you could always add more salt later. It's not going to be as good, but it's way better than over-salting something and it being totally inedible. And I think also, if you're just learning to cook, you know, using recipes to kind of help you learn. And then you start to get that intuition. Okay, let me rinse off my fingers. And... Look at y'all's comments. I'm gonna get some water too. Because I've been talking for over an hour. 
I don't think I've taken one sip. Ingham says, do you have any, oh, cheap student food, we talked about that. Um, Ingham says, in the UK, we don't really smoke fish. Interesting. Um, I don't do a lot of smoked fish. I guess the only really smoked fish I have is like smoked salmon. And that's usually if I'm like at a restaurant or something. But smoked fish can be good. Um, and as far as other cheap things, um, buying a head of lettuce is way cheaper than buying the prepackaged lettuce. You have to chop it, you have to wash it with salad spinner like I showed you, but it's much more affordable, you know. I, when I did the grocery store tour last week, we went and looked at the lettuce. A pound of lettuce, a head of lettuce, which was a little bit more than a pound, was $2 versus the boxed lettuce, like pre-washed everything, was $6 a pound. So three times more expensive to get the pre-cut, pre-washed stuff. And that was the kind of giant container. So if you're getting a small bag or small containers, it's going to be even more expensive than that. Okay. I think another thing too, if you're on a budget, is trying to eliminate your food waste. I mean, it's something we should all be trying to do, um, is to not waste food, but trying to reduce your food waste so you're not buying stuff that's going bad. So freezing stuff if you're not going to be able to use it, making uh, vegetable stock or chicken stock or beef stock with your leftover vegetable scraps. I have a whole video, um, it's one of the top videos on my channel actually, is how to make chicken broth in the slow cooker. So if you want to know how to use that, that's a great way to use up extra veggies that might be going bad or little bits that you might not use in a recipe like the, like the peel of the onion. You could use that to make stock this little top part of the onion that I cut off. So that video will tell you more about that. Um, and yeah, just trying to incorporate things, have a meal plan, like plan your meals out. So you kind of know what you're using everything for and what dish it's going to go into. But I think we are about done here. Okay, I'm going to turn this heat off because since this is cast iron, it will hold the heat for a long time. And let this finish answer some more of your questions. And let me pull the potatoes out so you can see what that looks like. And then we will um, see the whole meal together. Cody the Gamer says, please help. Yeah, I'll leave it. What? Leave it. Oh, okay. Thanks. Jason is on the on top of the comments. Okay. This might be dumb. Okay. Well, I didn't even see what they said, so that's no fun. <laughs> um, so, any other... Sorry, any other questions y'all have? Oh, Butterfly Planner reported it too, thanks. That is one thing, sometimes on my live streams, like because it takes me a while because I just ramble and talk and talk and talk when I'm answering y'all's questions, sometimes things get reported and removed way before I even see them. And then I'm like, man, I wonder what that person was saying that everyone thought was so inappropriate or unhelpful. Okay, so here are potatoes, all roasted up as you can see, nice and crispy and brown. They smell amazing. The rosemary smells amazing. Um, and we've got the other pan back here. The bok choy stuff is here. I will show y'all what everything looks like real quick. Jason, could yeah, you, you take this? Right. Do you want to put this hot pad under it? The rubber it's thing. Going. We're going to just get this pan out of the way. Yeah. Can you just, just pop that Ooh, there? Oh, it smells good. Okay, so mm. everything smells good. So me and Jason got to eat. But I'm going to take y'all off the off the tripod here for a second and show you what we've got. So this is the finished product. Bok choy and sausage and onion, a little bit of salt. That's all that's in there, chorizo sausage. So that adds a lot of flavor. It looks amazing. It smells amazing. And then the potatoes over here, you can see, let me see if I can pluck one off. Nice and golden and roasted. Um, the rosemary's in there. Garlic powder, salt, and olive oil. And then with this, might have like a fermented pickle or some sauerkraut or something on the side just because I think it's nice to kind of have that like acidic food to go with it. Uh, I'm going to get you guys back in the tripod real quick. Having that acidic food to go with it just kind of cuts through, you know, the richness of the sausage. I think that pairs really well together. Obviously, you know, you can do whatever you want, but that's what we're making here. You know, if you want to make this at home, it could be really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. 
It was really fun talking to you and just chatting and all that stuff and answering your questions. I hope you're having a great evening and I hope you'll come back again next month for next month's live stream. The first Thursday of every month we're doing this. So hope you guys are having a great evening. I'm going to eat dinner now and I will talk to you later. Bye.